Hello everyone, my name is Plasma Muffin, and this is the first episode of Overcast, which is my podcast where I talk about things and in the background for people who want to have something to look at while they listen to it, I'm going to have Risk of Rain. So, I call it Overcast as a bit of a play on words, kind of a pun there, because uh, Risk of Rain, Overcast, that has to do with rain. So, yeah, I've talked about this before, but this is the first episode, and it wasn't actually originally intended to be the first episode, but it worked out perfectly, so I thought, why not? So, yep, that's about it. Enjoy the video. Hello, everyone. My name is Plasma Muffin, and today I'm going to be talking about Steam, or more specifically, why I don't like it. So, basically, for those of you who don't know what Steam is, it's a program made by Valve to manage, track, and download games, as well as to play them and organize them. And I don't like it. So I have five different points that I'm going to be talking about here, and so let's start. Number one is the majority of computer games actually require Steam to run. There are a few that don't, and some of them are... um, Well, they're not required, it's not required to have Steam, but it's recommended, and if you don't use Steam, you're missing out on some features. So, there's games on Steam like uh, Skyrim and Terraria, Minecraft isn't on Steam, fortunately, but there's a lot of games, and most of them require Steam. Especially the ones made by big companies, and this is bad because for those of us who don't want to use Steam, we don't have a choice if we want to play games. So either we don't play these games, or we get Steam. And that's, to me, that sounds quite a lot like a monopoly, which is definitely a bad thing. And for the games that don't require Steam, for example, Terraria, they generally require other similar things, like the website GOG. And so either you have to choose to use Steam, which a ton of other games use, and so it's just a lot more convenient to use Steam, or you have to use something that's similar to Steam. Or in some cases, it works best on Steam, and if you don't get it on Steam, you're going to be missing out. For example, with Terraria, uh, uh, if you have Steam, then you get modding, and it's a lot harder to mod on the GOG version of Steam, and I think there might be some other problems with the uh, the GOG version. I think it messes with Linux ver- version of the game or something. But my point is, most games require Steam, and so for those of us that are like me that don't like Steam, we don't have any other options. So we're essentially forced to use Steam, even if we don't want it. So number two, being online is mandatory. Yeah, mandatory. When you first get Steam or even if you get a game that requires Steam, then to play that game, you have to go online. So you have to go on the Steam website, get the Steam application, run it, and then you'll have to make an account, sign in, and to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of making accounts for games. I miss the old days back when people just put their games on discs, you put the disc in your computer, install it, and you're good to go. You don't have to be online, you don't have to log in, you don't have to do any of this garbage. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen nowadays, and even games that do have discs usually just contain a verification code that allows you to download the game. And so, for people that have slow internet connections, like me, this can make it literally impossible to play any game that requires Steam. So for example, Hollow Knight is about 9 gigabytes, and you have to download that. There is no other option, you can't get it on a CD or a disk or thumb drive or anything. You have to actually download it from the internet. And so that wouldn't be so bad, but the thing is you have to log into Steam every time you want to play your games. You have to actually have an internet connection that can connect to Steam and verify that yes, you are still connected to Steam. And you're not just using someone else's Steam account or whatever. So you always have to log in, so every time I boot up my computer, I can't play my games unless I log into Steam. And if my internet's being slow right then, it won't let me play any of my Steam games. Literally any of them. None of them work if you don't log in. Now there is an offline mode, but in offline mode, first thing is, 
you have to actually log into Steam the normal way and go online to be able to activate offline mode. Either that, or you have to start the Steam client, log in, and then wait for your connection to time out before it will allow you to use the option to go into offline mode. And that brings me to my next point. Auto-updating is mandatory. Now back in the day, games didn't used to update all that often, and when they did update, it was generally just small bug fixes. Well, most games anyway. There's some games like World of Warcraft that have always had uh, major or minor updates pretty much constantly. But the thing is, if you're, say, playing Terraria and there's an update, you have to stop playing. And it will not let you continue to play the game until it updates. And even if you don't want to update, so if you have a fast internet connection, then it'll download the update before you even know that there is an update to download. And so suddenly everything will be different. And sometimes these updates can be literally game breaking and cause you to have to start the game over. This is not okay. And, um,. And as long as it knows there's an update, then it won't let you play the game until it downloads that update. So, imagine that there's an update for Terraria, and you somehow manage to cancel the auto-updating, which... Basically, you the, the closest thing to don't update this game you can choose on Steam is only update this game when I launch it, which still prevents you from playing games that haven't been updated. So if you go offline when there's a game that needs an update, it won't let you play the game, even if... You're offline. You're in offline mode. You have all the game files downloaded, but it won't let you play the game because there's an update, and it does not want you to play older versions of the game because that's illegal or something, and they hate joy. Um, but that is a huge problem, and I noticed it very early on. When I first got Terraria, which is what introduced me to Steam, because although I got the collector's edition, which had a disc, I put it in the computer and it just told me, download Steam and you can play the game. So, which kind of defeats the purpose of having a disc in the first place. Anyway, I downloaded it, it uh, I activated Steam, and then I had to wait like a year for it to download, because we have slow internet. So I finally got Terraria downloaded and played it for a couple weeks. Guess what happened? Yeah, there was an update, and it wouldn't let me play the game without updating it. And so I downloaded the update, and then and I found that a lot of the changes in the update I didn't want, or at the very least, I didn't want them yet, because they changed a lot of things. They changed some of the UI. This was the 1.2.3 update, and it added new armors, new uh, mechanics to the game, new graphics changes, and I didn't like this, and I wanted to go back, but I found that you can't undo Steam updates, and you can't disable Steam updates. I was really upset. Like, I was really upset. I had just gotten this game like a week ago, and I'd just gotten into hard mode, I was very excited, and then suddenly it drops an update in my face. A mandatory, automatic, sneaky update, like the kind that Microsoft likes to do. And suddenly I was updated, and I did not like it, and there was no option to go back. So fortunately I managed to find a little version changer that someone had made for Terraria, which sadly does not work anymore. But I managed to get back to the old 1.2.2 version, and I played that. But I shouldn't have to download third-party programs just to play the old version of the game. What if I don't like the new version? What if I like the older version and I don't want to play the newer version, but it just won't let me stop? For example, in Hollow Knight, I wanted to finish the current playthrough I was doing before I downloaded the Lifeblood update, so I put that off for a while. And then, of course, it snuck in and downloaded it a few days later. Fortunately, I'd already backed up all of the old Hollow Knight uh, version files, but it was it was annoying. And really, there is no reason to auto-update automatically. Well, auto-update, of course, it's always automatic, because that's where the auto part comes in. But this is the biggest, by far, gripe that I have with Steam, is that it always auto-updates. It forces you to auto-update. And there's nothing you can do to stop that. And sometimes, if again, if you have slow internet, then you might have just managed to be able to download the game. Then you play it for a few days and find out that there's like a 500 megabyte to one pl 
one two gigabyte plus update that you have to download before you can play the game. You've already got a perfectly working version of the game on your computer, download it. But even if you go into offline mode, you can't play the game until you update. And that could take literal days, depending on what kind of internet connection you have. Because, unfortunately, not everyone is gifted with fiber optic internet due to financial constraints or where we live, like us. So, yeah, that's the biggest problem. And I might get back to that later, but for now I'm going to go to point number four. Sharing games is a nightmare. Back in my day, when I was like nine or ten, we played the old EA Harry Potter games, and to play those, all we had to do was put them in the computer, install it, and play. The only thing that was required to play was to have the disc in the computer, and the games actually worked without the disc, as long as you started them with the disc in the computer. So you could just put the disc into one computer, have someone start the game up, and then take it out and put it in the other computer, and so two people could play the game at the same time. Which was good because, well, we're family members. So my s sister and I used to do that a lot. And so, one of us would be playing Harry Potter, and the other one of us would want to play Harry Potter at the same time, so we would do that. So that sounds all well and good, right? Well, with Steam, it doesn't actually work that way. For example, now this isn't just a problem with Steam, but it is a problem with Steam, and if it could be rectified, then that would greatly increase my opinion of it, especially since, as mentioned before, it's pretty much mandatory for the majority of games nowadays. So, basically, if you want to share games on Steam, you have to have both people, um, some, like, I don't even remember, it's just, you have to go into the sharing menu, you have to hunt through all the different options to find the share game option, and then you can share games with up to, I think, four or five other users, and all of your games will be shared with that person. So, for example, if my sister buys, um, let's say my sister buys Spore on Steam. So, she does that, and I actually won't be able to play it be at first because while we live in the same house, it's only on her Steam account. So, what we have to do is we have to do the shared library, which is actually, it's a good idea, but it's poorly implemented. Because I understand how, I understand that they wouldn't make it so you could just share it with anyone you, you like, because, well, that would make it so only one person would have to buy the game, and the rest would just be able to get it from that person. So, anyway, what, um, what you have to do is you have to have both computers, uh, tell the Steam network or whatever to let that one user share the game library, and if you want it to be two-way, where any one game that one of you has, the other one can play, regardless of which one it is, then you have to do this, you have to do this step twice, once for each user. And, so, you do that, and if the other person is online, and I'm not sure if, even if it's, I, I don't know if it's just if they're online, or if they have to actually be playing the game, if they're playing the game, you can't play it, which I think is ridiculous. Well, I mean, it was kind of like that back when we had to use CDs for our games. Well, had to. I wish we could use CDs nowadays. But it was kind of like that, because only one CD could have it at a time. But there are ways around that. But the thing is, if we have it downloaded on both computers, why wouldn't both of us be able to play the game at the same time? That would make so much sense. Especially since we're brother and sister, and the computers are literally right next to each other. But anyway, I digress. Um, so, imagine that I want to play Skyrim, but my sister's playing Skyrim. Well, I have to wait for her to finish before I can play it. Also, if I'm in offline mode, I can't play any of the shared games that I have, even if I have them downloaded. Actually, recently, I wanted to play The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, and I had it downloaded and my sister wasn't on her Steam account, she wasn't playing it, so I would be able to play it, right? Well, I had it installed on an external drive, because with Steam, if you want to have your games installed, you, you can't put them on a disk or anything. You have to have them all either installed on your computer or installed in a Steam directory on another computer or another drive or something. So I, since we don't have unlimited in, uh, storage space on our computers, I had to put Oblivion on a little... Uh, mobile storage drive. So I connected to that, and I even went into 
the files, found the Oblivion.exe and clicked that and it said you have to launch this from Steam. Despite the fact that I already had the entire thing downloaded. So I went into Steam and it said Oblivion is not installed because it didn't see it installed on my computer and it wouldn't let me tell it I already have it on this drive. So what I had to do is I had to click install. And it, and it, so then I clicked install and it said downloading game. Now, fortunately, it figured out that I didn't actually have to download the game because it already had the game there. However, it had to check each individual file to make sure that I had it. Which is just ridiculous. I downloaded the entire thing. There should be no need for an internet connection because I've downloaded it. It's on this drive. If you would just, you know, look at it, then you would be able to tell that. But it takes like an hour just to see that I don't need to download anything. So, finally, I managed to actually play the game. And that's just a huge pain in the neck. It is not necessary, and it's just completely annoying. You can't, you can only have it so either all your games are on an external drive, or all of them are on your computer. But imagine that you have, let's say you have 100 gigabytes of storage on each of those things, on your external drive and on your computer, but if you have say 250 gigabytes of games you have to put uh, or sorry not 250 but maybe 150 you have to put 75 gigabytes on each or 100 on one 50 on the other but it only sees the ones that are on your computer unless you I guess get it to look at the to only look at the ones on the drive so you could either have access to all the games that are on the drive or all the games that are on your computer not both so it's a huge pain. And again, the fact that you have to download every single one of these things and put them on a computer instead of just conveniently having them on a disc, it's really annoying. And the amount of storage space it ends up taking up is pretty darn big. And then if you uninstall a game, you have to, when you reinstall it, you have to download the entire game all over again. You can't just put all the files onto, onto, back onto the CD or whatever. So you can't just put a CD back in and install it from there. You have to download it. And if you have limited amount of uh, limited amounts of bandwidth and a limit on how much you can download per month, like we do, or a slow internet connection, like we do, then sometimes it just isn't possible to do that. And it can take days, literal days, to actually download a game and get it to run from scratch, which is just ridiculous and stupid. So, number five. You have to download absolutely everything, not just what you want. So, imagine that you have a Steam account, and you want to play Steam games. And you're okay with downloading the library and whatever, but you have to download absolutely everything else that Steam has. I'm actually going to go and check right now and see uh, just how big Steam is. Holy feebles. Okay, so I'm looking at my Steam... Uh, location on my computer, and Steam is 18.5 gigabytes. That is huge. That's bigger than a lot of the games I have. What's with that? There's absolutely no reason for all that to be there. All I need is for it to be able to connect to the internet, even though it shouldn't even need to do that, and tell them that, yes, I do own these games. But it won't even let me do that. It has to download Steam, the Steam Library, the Steam Workshop, the Steam Browser, the Steam Friends, Steam Trading Cards, Steam absolutely everything. And for what? I mean, all it does is allow me to play the games that I already have downloaded. I mean, if I have a 15 gigabyte game, I should be able to play that game because I have all the files. As long as it connect can connect to the internet and tell me, yes, I do own this game and I am not pirating it, then it should be able to let me play the game, but it doesn't. It forces me to download Steam and download everything, including things I will literally never use. In fact, I don't even know what 99.10% of all the stuff on Steam actually does. And the only stuff I use is the, uh, s the library for playing my games and whatever it's called for looking at what games are also on Steam. Although, I shouldn't even really have to do that either. Again. So... Basically, Steam is just, it's a huge nightmare, and the fact that it's so popular and so widely used means that you can't escape it 
If you want to play some of these games, you're going to have to get Steam. And if you don't have a computer that maybe has enough storage space, or if you don't have enough internet speed to download these games, too bad, you don't have a choice. And a lot of people nowadays will actually, when selling their games, you can buy a disc, but it just contains verification code that forces you to go online and download it. And if you have, say, a laptop, then you could maybe go to the library where they have fast internet and use that to download your games. But if you don't have a, a laptop, if you just have your normal computer, you can't exactly take that whole thing to the library and use it. And if you have slow internet, you are completely prohibited from playing any games, even if your computer would otherwise be able to run them and has enough space to store them, because you just don't have a fast enough internet connection to download them. So, uh, oh yes, another thing I want to talk about is Steam updates, because Steam auto-updates itself. You cannot turn that off, unlike with games, where you can make it so they only update sometimes, and they'll at least tell you when they have an update before they download it, most of the time. But when Steam has an update, which it does a lot, then it won't let you even log into Steam before it updates. And so you can't play any of your games, not just... The, it, any games that need updated, but any games that don't have updates and that have all the files for them on your computer, it won't let you play those until it downloads the update for Steam. And the updates are huge! I mean, Steam is 18 gigabytes. The updates can be pretty darn big. And what do they do? I look at the change logs and it says, fix this thing or fix that thing. I don't even use those things. I just want to play the games. And there's no Steam Lite version that only includes the library and verification. The only version of Steam is a huge, fat conglomeration of garbage that isn't really necessary. So, um, to finish off this video, I'm going to say that if you are a game developer, if you are making games, please, please don't put them on Steam. Don't support Valve. Don't support Steam and the conglomeration of crud that they have. Don't give in to them. Don't support their monopoly. And if you do put your game on Steam, put it somewhere else as well. If you have um, uh, CDs that your game comes on, allow people to install the game from the CDs. Don't make them download it. Because, again, not everyone has great internet. And it doesn't matter if, I don't know, you have great internet or if most people have great internet. If you make it so your computer game requires good internet to run, even to download, then you're limiting your audience, and so you're actually going to end up losing money in the long run. But yeah, please don't put your game on Steam. For example, Minecraft is the most popular game of all time, next to, I think, Tetris or Pong, and it doesn't require Steam. It requires its own launcher, which is not great, but it's still better than Steam. And while it does like to update a ton, with, and with no discernible purpose, at the very least, it's not as big, and it doesn't have all the friends features and stuff. So, uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope that what I said managed to, if you like Steam, maybe convince you that it's not such a great idea, and at the very least, it shouldn't be mandatory. And if you're a game developer, hopefully what I said convinced you to not make your game Steam only. So, that's all I have to say for today. Thank you again for watching this video. Any discussion, comments, uh, what you thought about this video, what you think about Steam, are very welcome to be commented on the video. And, um, so yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.